Hello and welcome to the Lens at 177 and with a new session of Parliament that started uh, last month. We have today the Leader of Opposition joining us on the show to talk about uh, how the Opposition in Parliament uh, will perform in this new session of Parliament. We'll talk about the Fiji First Party. Mr. Siratu, welcome to the program. My first question to you. You might have a list of bad things or good things that this government is doing or has done. Can we hear that list? First, with the negatives, what this government hasn't been doing right? Thank you, Anish. Uh, let me just thank you for this opportunity uh, to engage again with the, with the public. And uh, uh, I do acknowledge on behalf of the uh, opposition. Uh, I always prefer to call ourselves the government in waiting. Uh, I'm a bit concerned about uh, the words uh, that you uh, put in the question, particularly criticizing. Uh, I stated very clearly uh, in my address to uh, contribute in the motion on His Excellency's uh, opening address uh, for the 2024 Parliament session that uh, we, as a gov uh, we as the alternative government, the opposition, we will work hard and we will take our responsibility seriously, particularly for me uh, as the leader. I want to see the leader of the opposition's office and the opposition uh, in a new light, providing that leadership that brings stability, security, uh, equality, and most importantly, opportunity for all Fijians. And I did state very clearly to government that we will work hard we will uh, uh, criticize where needed because that's our role particularly in providing the check and balance uh, for government we will acknowledge uh, the good things uh, that government is doing uh, and at the same time in terms of representation we are there to represent uh, the people as well. Uh, I have made a few uh, releases lately, uh, not to condemn government, but that's the role that we play. And as I've stated, uh, in terms of uh, policies, um, may I ask, what are the new policies that government has brought into place? I know that there are some work currently undertaken, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Education Commission, National Strategic Plan, the Economic Review, uh, and so many other things that's uh, currently being. Uh, so what is new? Because most of the policies are just a continuation from uh, previous governments. And of course, we have acknowledged government in uh, the areas where uh, matters of national interest, things that unite us, uh, we have acknowledged government on those. But in terms of um, uh, your question on uh, uh, some of the things that we have uh, uh, spoken about, uh, you know, I've talked about, uh, uh, we've always talked about good governance, uh, institutional integrity, uh, the rule of law, uh, and I think most recently, cost of living, law and order. And uh, of course, the issue on uh, on uh, uh, the state of uh, infrastructure as well. Uh, that is some uh, some of the, the uh, areas that uh, we spoke on, and uh, we just need to uh, ensure that government uh, focuses on these issues because it affects the people directly. Cost of living, state of infrastructure, whether it's roads, water, electricity, uh, and and uh, so forth, and that is why, uh, as I've stated, it's not criticizing for the sake of criticizing. I've always made it clear uh, to government as well that uh, that is uh, perhaps the brand, the new image that we want to bring into the. We we have been in government for the last eight years. Uh, unlike previously, opposition is just criticizing for the sake of criticizing, opposing for the sake of opposing because they were in the opposition. And uh, we need to be careful because 
uh, you are the alternative government, you are the government in waiting. You will have to pick up and continue with the work if you are called into government. And that is why I asked the question about what's new because we've been criticized for the last eight, the last eight years. And now uh, with the coalition government in place, uh, they are still uh, trying to uh, make their way around some of the key issues, which probably, in my opinion, should have been prepared uh, already, given their, their involvement uh, over the last uh, eight years. But I've talked about um, uh, appointments, again, uh, those are my very recent, uh, I've talked about the politicization of appointments. Uh, there are established processes. I've talked about the state of infrastructure, government needs to pick up and continue. Uh, the aging infrastructure is a fact and issue. No one is going to deny that. But what are we going to do about it? In terms of our water, in terms of our road, Fiji First has done its part. No government is perfect. No government probably would be able to complete what's there. It's a matter of prioritization within the resources that we have and ensure that it is done. Because when the roads are bad, our kids do not go to school. Our health workers do not reach the communities. Our people cannot access, uh, take their products to the market and so forth. This is why the roads are so important. This is why we are raising these issues. Because we are also going around talking to people about the things that they face daily. You said you are a government in waiting. That makes you prime minister in waiting. How do you want to become a prime minister? Through the ballot or through a vote of no confidence? In the <laughs> there are options for uh, the vote of no confidence in the constitution. Uh, the onus is on government. Government has to deliver. We want to ensure stability. We want to ensure consistency and continuity. And that is why we have been raising these issues. Uh, you know, that probably is the worst case scenario. But the options will always be open. And it is on government to deliver. They have made promises. They have to deliver. The, the actions must match the rhetorics. I've always been emphasizing this. You know, there has been a lot of talks, there has been a lot of commitments and so forth, but the actions, what are the tangible outputs? What are the things that are being delivered to the people? Because these are the things that affect them. So, leadership is very important, as you correctly stated. We've gone into the ballots. We were the biggest party in parliament, but unfortunately we cannot form government. We are happy with where we are. Let's take the country forward. As leader of opposition, do you think some votes from government side can come your way should a vote of no confidence come on the floor of parliament? Should a vote of no confidence come on the parliament, do you expect votes from government side to come your way? Uh, that's a... Uh, an interesting question. Uh, very interesting. Uh, very interesting. Uh, as I've said, we need to focus on stability. Uh, is there a need for it? And if we have to do it, then we have to make sure that we have the numbers. Democracy and votes in parliament, it's all about uh, numbers. And definitely we will have to need the support from the other side in order to, be, to get through uh, with a vote of no confidence. Talking about the Prime Ministership of the country currently, how do you assess Mr. Rambuka's performance? Well, I have stated this so often, everything rises and falls on leadership. There are some critical questions that need to be raised. And uh, we as leaders, we cannot deviate, we cannot shy away from these responsibilities. And uh, you know, I know that you're going to ask me questions about transparency and accountability. It starts from the top. It starts from the leadership, the very leadership of this country. There are incidences now involving ministers. What is the prime minister's decision, the decisive action that needs to be taken? That is quite worrying because we, if we turn a blind eye on it, then who is going to address it? And will you have the opportunity to uh, address it later on? Because these are critical issues because Leadership uh, determines the culture uh, and the uh, standards within the organization. And therefore, uh, it's so important. And, uh, you know, I have been very honest in this. We have some serious questions about how Prime Minister has handled some of the issues. It involves his senior ministers. 
you know, whether they are, uh, it's proper to conduct proper investigations. Uh, if he is not accepting some of the uh, allegations or whatever, why don't you conduct a proper investigation so that you have all the information that you need so that you can make an informed decision on the issue. And that will also clear uh, those involved, you know, that's justice. Mm. Secondly, uh, let's step them aside so that they do not interfere with the processes. Uh, that should be the obvious and the right thing to do so that we can continue with the investigations. But again, as I've said, it must start from the top. And uh, that's the challenge that uh, is before the Honorable Prime Minister now and his ministers. We know the Prime Minister is leading a three-party coalition. Do you think there are hidden, hidden individuals who are controlling the Prime Minister in reaching a decision which he wants to make but isn't able to make? Prime Minister is responsible. Uh, the buck stops with him. And there are advisors, there are people who influence him. But at the end, we all understand the difficult position that he is in. Uh, but uh, for, for, for me, I will always say this, that is the challenge for leadership. You know, there are lonely lo uh, moments in leadership when you are on your own to make those tough calls, to make those tough decisions based on the facts that are before you. Standing on the high moral ground is so important. Whether it's the interest of the nation, the decisions that he's taking now, is it in the best interest of the nation? Is it about the future that we want for our children? Or is it about political survival? Mm. That is the key question that we need to ask. Do you think his decision to remove Aseri Ranronro was correct? Again, uh, I have been asked this question previously. Uh, I do not respond to, uh, to it uh, uh, then because I said I cannot make the decision of the, on behalf of the Prime Minister because he makes decisions based on the information that is given to him. Mr. Siratu, we'll take a short break and continue the discussion after the break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back and today we are talking to the leader of opposition Inya Siruratu on the lens at 177. Uh, Mr. Siruratu, you talked about uh, transparency and accountability in the first segment. Let me touch on that. Uh, by releasing cabinet decisions, is that being transparent and accountable, which your government wasn't doing? Fiji First government wasn't releasing what was being discussed in um, uh, cabinet cabinet decisions made, but this government is doing that. Is that some form of accountability and transparency that you agree that it's happening? It is, and we acknowledge government for that. But uh, with the previous government, uh, releases are made later. The Prime Minister now made the decision that uh, straight after his cabinet uh, meetings, uh, the information are prepared straight away, and uh, but nothing is hidden, uh, Anish. Nothing is hidden. Uh, uh, but it's the different approaches uh, that is taken. But in terms of transparency and accountability, uh, I need to say this one, uh, it's expected of us. <coughs> and uh, the people deserve it. Uh, it's something that uh, we have to abide by. Uh, I'm thankful for some of the initiatives that we are, uh, are taking now, and particularly uh, with the work that uh, uh, involves the legislature, uh, the Honorable Speaker, in terms of strengthening our oversight, accountability, and transparency framework within Parliament. But outside Parliament, there are processes and systems. That is why good governance is so important. That is why 
adhering to the rule of law uh, is so important because there are established processes and systems and this is why and this is something that I also uh, was part of my my address uh, to uh, His Excellency uh, the President's uh, opening statement of Parliament for the 2024 opening session that we need to strengthen this accountability and transparency framework because it's good in terms of governance at the same time we want to entice investors into the country we need to bring in tourists and uh, uh, this is the environment that is created when we have good governance accountability and transparency and uh, interestingly lately as well going through the constitution uh, something that uh, probably we did not uh, do at our time but uh, section 121 of the the constitution talks about the establishment of a accountability and transparency framework probably that's something that we need to consider now as we go into the future because we need a stable democracy we want to ensure that we move the country forward and let's do it together why do you think uh, the fiji first government didn't do uh, get a transparency and accountability commission going we have started with the uh, code of conduct but that has not finished the process there are other uh, priorities there uh, so uh, as i admitted i saw it in the constitution and probably this is something that given the momentum that we are taking now we have uh, visited the Australian Federal Parliament, mm. the State Parliament of uh, New South Wales. Uh, we had a workshop uh, where the Australian and uh, New Zealand parliamentarians attended. And we were focusing on this issue, transparency, oversight, scrutiny, and accountability. So probably this is the time to do it if it has not been done before. But the clauses, the clause is there already in the Constitution. Mm. Mr. Serratu, let me see how transparent are you with me in th in, on the theme of being transparent and accountable. Can you tell me what happened on level 9? Why were the Fiji First Ministers called to level 9 when you, when you were in government at a time when the court had wanted orders to be served on? Unfortunately, Anish, I was not here during that time. I free? was on a climate change meeting yeah. abroad and I know nothing at all about what transpired at level 9. You did not want to find out later on? That is the simple answer to your question. Okay. I was not here. Again on the theme of transparency, how often do you consult Mr. Bainim Rama and Mr. Sayed Kayum in decisions you are making now as leader of opposition? Let me assure you, and I've stated this so many times in the previous interviews, I am part of a party. That's how I got into parliament. Based on the electoral laws that we have, I am voted uh, from the party. And uh, I think section 63 outlines clauses if uh, I want to get out of parliament, you know, in terms of. But uh, the unfortunate thing about us, uh, and I've stated this so many times in this, because of the matter of privilege that was brought into parliament last year against uh, the party leader we have no option but to appoint a leader of the opposition because the parliament a party leader is not a member of parliament because of that uh, matter of privilege that was unfortunate but because i'm a member of the party I have to communicate with the party leadership and that involves uh, uh, Frank Bainamarama as the party leader. In terms of um, uh, uh, the former general secretary, now I communicate with Honorable Koya because he is the general secretary. He has taken over that role. That's my responsibility. I am in charge of the caucus within parliament but I still have to consult the party leadership on matters relating to the party. And that is opposition. Unlike previously, when there was a leader of the opposition, when there was a different uh, party leader. You know what happened within parliament. There was the, parliament, uh, the party leader in parliament, but the caucus, according to section 74, I think, of the constitution, they opted to nominate another opposition leader. 
Well, the party leader is also in parliament. But in our case, unfortunately, I have to stand in as opposition leader because the party leader is not in parliament. But we communicate on party issues. Can you tell us whether you were elected as party leader, sorry, a leader of opposition in caucus unanimously or was there a vote? Yes. The, there is a vote. There is a vote in Parliament under Section 74 right. uh, that nominates uh, the leader of the opposition. And you're... anyone can become the leader of the opposition. It's not only me, mm. but anyone can become the leader of the opposition. Mr. Sayed Kayum is holding more press conferences than you. Why is that? He is holding press conferences for issues probably not related to the party for now. But on behalf of Fiji Fest, a party you represent? Uh, not that I'm uh, uh, aware of, because in the recent while uh, well, he makes references to some issues, but most of these uh, recent uh, uh, appearances are because of the court cases and whatever, and then because of the line of questioning. Uh, uh, he is more uh, into the, but uh, for me, I, I, we are all different, uh, Anish. Uh, I always say this, different approaches to leadership. We all have uh, different uh, leadership styles. Uh, as I've said, I always, action speaks louder than words. It's your conduct, it's your ethics, it's your discipline, it's your principles, and particularly it's your service, you know? Uh, look at yourself and look at me. You have two ears, two eyes and one mouth. Mm. And two legs and two arms. Which says that you need to do more, you need to go out more, listen more and see things better and speak less. Mm. Uh, I don't have to necessarily uh, reply to every issue, but you know, even when needed, critical issues, I do make comments and of course there are other members uh, of the opposition uh, caucus that uh, makes uh, statements not only in the mainstream media but uh, there's a lot in the social media as well. Can I put it to you uh, with Mr. Said Kayum uh, speaking outside of parliament, you inside parliament, is that a plan that Mr. Said Kayum uh, attacks the government, its policies outside of parliament in a brutal manner we have seen and you remain the quiet boy inside parliament and speak when you have to speak. And uh, Mr. Kayum is a citizen of this country. And uh, why pick on him? Every Fijian has every right to speak. You talk about media freedom. You are free now. Are you covering all the issues that is supposed to appear uh, in the dailies? So every Fijian has every right to speak their mind out. Uh, that's the freedom that we have in our democracy. And he is one uh, who is uh, making the most of that opportunity. And uh, the others are free to do the same as well. So uh, make the most of it. Mr. Seruratu, uh, the Fiji First Party SP accounts submitted to the Fijian Elections Office is in debt. Is the situation changing in terms of the financial position of the party? Thank you, Anis. It is changing. Uh, and uh, probably uh, the better person to answer for that is uh, uh, the acting general secretary, uh, sorry, the general secretary, uh, the Honorable Fair Square, because uh, uh, it's more of uh, party matters, uh, although I admit that I am part of the party. But uh, the simple answer is yes, we are thankful uh, to uh, the Fiji Elections Office. We submit. Uh, all our reports, uh, we answer to all the questions and queries uh, as uh, legislated and um, we, we are uh, getting better uh, as the days go by. Are you aware that any data has put up a civil action against the Fiji Press Party in the recent month or have you ever heard anything? Uh, I have not uh, had a discussion with the uh, uh, General Secretary of that. In fact, we are, we are meeting today uh, at one o'clock, mm. uh, but I, I'm not aware of that. But I am aware that we have debts. Mm. Mr. Siratu will take a short break and continue the discussion on the other side. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations and the milestones. 
we will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back to the Lens at 177 and today we are talking to the leader of opposition, Ina Siriratu. Mr. Siriratu, the final segment of our discussion. Let's talk about your caucus in uh, Parliament, your MPs in Parliament. You have total control over them. Uh, they all listen to you. Nobody diverts from plans that are put in place for the caucus. Thank you, Anish. We, we are very uh, united. We are a strong uh, team. Uh, and I'm thankful uh, to the members for their cooperation and understanding. Of course, there will be different opinions uh, in within the caucus. There will be different ideas. But that is why we have meetings, we deliberate. And I always like uh, to hear uh, alternative opposing views because it helps us to understand situations better to plan for worst case scenarios and most importantly you know it uh, activates our critical and uh, um, critical thinking and uh, analytical skills uh, you know because a lot of times we see things um, in the obvious but of course when we have these differing views uh, it really helps us to understand uh, issues better but in the nutshell we are united we are one and we are strong uh, of course there will always be different views but we uh, after thorough deliberations there is consensus and we move forward uh, that's the role of leadership as well in terms of managing uh, the uh, conduct within uh, the caucus I know you're going to say it will be a party decision, but let me ask you, sh uh, should you st step aside tomorrow as leader of opposition? Personally, who do you think should come and take your position from the party? Uh, all the 26 members are qualified. Uh, and again, under Section 74 uh, of the Constitution, uh, the caucus, uh, again, in consultation with the party as well, will then decide, and then it's moved uh, on the floor of Parliament. There are very strong candidates uh, in terms of experience and knowledge and uh, the areas of expertise. But at the same time, you know, I'm encouraged to see the youths, the vibrancy and the talents in our youths. And this is something for me. I think I was asked one of these questions in one of my pre uh, previous interviews. What would be the legacy that you want? Mm -hmm. You know, I said, it's not about me, but how do you nurture the next generation who will take over? I see some very uh, talented uh, parliamentarians mm. uh, in uh, our caucus and uh, they need to be given the opportunity. They need to be nourished, they need to be developed uh, and with the proper counselling, mentoring, they should do, do well. So it's open to all the 26 members, Anish. Mm. If Mr. Benyamarama or Mr. Said you are not there in 2026, are you ready to lead the party? Again, this is something that I don't decide. But uh, it's a party issue that we will need uh, to seriously look into. In the meantime, they are still uh, uh, free. And uh, of course, nothing changes uh, for now. Uh, we, again, as I've stated, we are the largest party in parliament. Uh, they are the ones that uh, brought in uh, the largest number of votes. Uh, and uh, it would uh, be uh, nice uh, to continue uh, with the same uh, momentum that we are taking uh, unless there are some changes that uh, the party will decide. But of course, uh, we will make the necessary decision uh, when it comes. But every member of the party should be prepared, including me, to take over the responsibility uh, if needed. That's a very diplomatic answer, but don't you aspire to be the Prime Minister of this country? Uh, to me, Anis, I, I've always been honest. To me, it's all about serving the country, whether as a minister, as a backbencher, uh, as uh, Prime Minister. Uh, Prime Minister. It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Uh, I, I, I don't really want to be the Prime Minister, but if uh, you know, the situation does uh, uh, come up, uh, and if I am the one that the party thinks and the caucus agrees with, then definitely, uh, because it is a serious responsibility, and uh, we, we need to prepare for that as well. 
given that uh, you may uh, aspire to be the PM of this country, if somebody goes hunting or looking for any bad record of you in the previous administration of Fiji Fest, will they find anything bad about you? <laughs> and it's, uh, no one is perfect. Uh, I have my past uh, as well, you know, uh, but uh, it's how you uh, take the opportunities that come your way, listen to the advices, the nurturing and including the spiritual side of things. Uh, as I've said, uh, uh, you, there's a history there uh, about you, but uh, I hope uh, I have uh, a clean record uh, in terms of uh, how I've conducted myself. In, uh, and I've always been very careful. Uh, as back in the days of the military, as Commissioner Northern, as a permanent secretary, because uh, history will define you. Mm. You are the one that creates your own legacy. You write your own report. Mm. Uh, and that is why when you have the opportunity to serve in a post or position by virtue of appointment, make the most of it. Mm. But again, you are still accountable and uh, keep that always at the back of your mind. Did you want, or had, if you had your way, did you want to see Dr. Reddy, if I remember, Rosie Yagbert, remain in Parliament uh, to serve uh, as uh, elected members of Fiji First because they resigned as soon as the Parliament started? If you had your way, would you want to see them in Parliament? Anish, uh, my re response is yes. You know, they, they are experienced, they are well qualified, and we have been. Uh, uh, good team, uh, uh, good and strong team together. Uh, but uh, people have uh, the right uh, to choose uh, as they uh, so decide. Uh, I know that um, uh, there are issues about finances, about uh, the families and health and so forth. Uh, it's unfortunate that we lost some of uh, the senior members of the party. But again, uh, you know, you can't hold them back. Uh, there are other opportunities elsewhere as well, and uh, we wish them well. Uh, but of course, we look forward uh, to continue to serve with them uh, uh, in future, uh, should we have the opportunity to, to do so again. Is it safe to say the current uh, Fiji Fest MPs will be the lot they'll be going into the 2026 elections? Again, uh, previously, if you look at the trend, uh, majority of uh, uh, party members uh, who are parliamentarians, uh, they are considered. But uh, in every election, uh, you have to reapply. Uh, I have reapplied uh, in the three previous elections uh, for a ticket, and that uh, goes for, for everyone. That goes for everyone. Again, that is a matter that will be decided uh, when uh, we are approaching the 2026 uh, national elections, and that's something that the party uh, will look into. The previous two elections, uh, Fiji first won because of brand Bani Marama. If Mr. Bani Marama is not there in 2026, and if you are there, what will brand Seruratu look like? No, I, this is one of the challenges that uh, I faced when I took over as leader of the opposition. And of course, we still have to decide who will be the party leader come the next election. You know, we I have always talked about uh, rebranding the party as well, should uh, the uh, situation uh, warrants us to, to take that, uh, that step. Uh, for us, uh, Fiji First particularly, and uh, what uh, uh, distinguishes uh, the Fiji First brand is, again, the principles, the values that we stand for, the ethics, the discipline. Uh, th these are the things that, uh, so I, in my own personal opinion, regardless if Baini Marama is there or not, he has already put in place the framework, mm -hmm. and particularly the things that he believes in, the principles, mm -hmm. what's good for Fiji in terms of moving forward, that is what the party will continue uh, to uh, advocate, uh, even in the absence of uh, 
it remains mm. and nothing is going to change. Mm. Mr. Siratu, final question for you. Uh, uh, your perks in, as leader of opposition includes a salary of 120,000, I believe. Uh, my question is, do you take all that salary to yourself or do you give some to the party, to <laughs> charity, or to <laughs> your church? <laughs> Thank you, Anish. Uh, currently, as you may be aware, uh, I'm on a 96,000 uh, salary because of the 20% uh, uh, pay cut as a uh, uh, part of the government's uh, austerity measures uh, in 2020 because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So there's already a 20% reduction in that uh, package and then normal taxes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, uh, you have responsibilities when you are part of a community. I belong to a church. I belong to the Old Boys Network. Uh, I have relatives, I have friends, mm -hmm. and uh, when you are in such positions as this, people do come in and ask for assistance, you know, and uh, you go out of your own way to provide uh, some assistance, whether it be monetary, whether it be in material or whatever. Mm -hmm. We do that, we do that. And uh, of course, uh, I'm a member of a party as well. I make contributions if and when needed. Mm -hmm. So the, and then I have a family as well <laughs> uh, to look after, and that's most important as well. Mm -hmm. uh, while you look after the, uh, the needs and the interests of others, uh, I have uh, a family as well, my dear wife and uh, three children, and uh, pay for their university studies and so forth. And uh, that is how this money is used, but uh, there will always be uh, that uh, opportunity to assist others as well mm. uh, when they do come for, the, for assistance. Mr. Seruratu, leader of opposition, leader of government in waiting and prime minister in waiting. Thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you, Anish. Thank you. And I wish you well. <laughs>